They're hidden in buried desert caves and deep overgrown forests, concealed in the smallest towns and alleyways. There are some places so remote and some recipes so mysterious that you'd have to travel a lifetime to uncover them. Lucky for you, the Travel Cafe has them on today's show. Our first uncovered recipe is found in the rugged landscape of the Australian outback. Not exactly the kind of place you'd associate with great food. And that's exactly why the Travel Cafe had to come here. You see, we heard about an underground kitchen here in Cooper Pedy, Australia, where rumor has it they're serving a rare desert dessert 30 feet underground. You picture a hole in the ground or a cave or something and it's not like that at all. Obviously. No, you can see that it's very nice, but to bet it, I mean, we're, we're a good 20 feet underground. Oh, right? yes. From where the surface is. Yes. Cooper Pedy is the opal mine capital of the world, a place where extreme temperatures and a quest for buried treasure forces these people to live and work underground. So, when Ann Johnson decided to open her restaurant, the Dugout Cafe, like everybody else, she went underground. How long have you had the restaurant? Almost 10 years. And we built it. We bought a, a small um, dugout. And we made it five times bigger. And it's here in Ann's underground cave that I managed to get an exclusive peek at a top secret recipe. A recipe some say has put Cooper Petey on the map. In fact, it is so secret that right now our driver has to wait out in the car and cannot come in because you, Anne, are about to prepare, and I've, <laughs> she's written it down for me, Kwandong, did I say it right? I did. Kwandong. Kwandong. Kwandong crepe. Now, this, this dessert is so incredible. As far as we know, this is the only place that you can get it, but I understand that you can maybe send away for the... Kwandongs. Kwandongs, and then you might be able to make a mistake. Yes, presumably. Fact is, Anne is very cagey about how foreigners might recreate her famous recipe. I don't think um, immigration would let you do that, would they? She wants to keep the secret a secret. You will not find Kwandong in the U.S. You will not be able to get Kwandong <laughs> past customs. You will not get it out of Cooper Petey. <laughs> well, I hope you can find them oh, because they're very good. Uh, very sweet. <laughs> but I have no idea. <laughs> First of all, I guess we should explain what they are, huh? Ah, yes. It's a wild native fruit. It's native to the Australian outback. And they taste sort of like... Almost like a cranberry? Yes. Very close. Very tart. I think I was reading somewhere that these are like a national treasure or something. There's a, they're protected, the trees themselves. The trees are protected. But the berries aren't. <laughs> Because <laughs> we got a lot of berries, and when you taste this, you're going to know why you want to get them. And what I did was to take three cups of dried kwandongs and put them in four cups of water with two cups of sugar and half a teaspoon of salt. And I brought that to the boil and then turned it off and left it to soak for uh, at least 30 minutes, but I prefer to leave it for one or two hours. And I'm adding about five tablespoons of cornstarch. It, you know, some people consider this to really be like the end of the earth, Kubrapedia. And you can probably understand why yes. when they come to visit. Yes. Is it? In some ways it is, but to me it's nicely so. Whenever we go into so-called civilization like Adelaide and so on, I find the air is very polluted. and. Uh, <laughs> The stress of traffic and all those things really get to me. And then after we've been there for a week or two, uh, we're really happy to come back to the bush. <laughs> and when we leave the last town behind, sometimes we stop the car, jump out, and, <laughs> and say, Yahoo! <laughs> and do you see where I'm standing right now? Do you see why I'm standing here? Because as you're stirring, do you see the vapors <laughs> coming right up? Yes. It smells so delicious. <laughs> I'm going to put in half a cup of lemon juice. 
And because this is the dried fruit, it's lost quite a bit of its color and I've cooked it as well. So I'm going to add just a little bit of red food coloring. If there was a secret part to this recipe, I guess it would be the Cointreau that I add at the end. It seems to give it that smoothness. Now I'm ready to assemble the crepe and I'm going to add some vanilla ice cream as well as some whipped cream. The reason to come to Cooper Pedy, Kwandong. The Travel Cafe has more one-of-a-kind recipes to uncover, including a trip to the doctor's office and a very unusual pancake. But first, if you'd like to find out where you can get Kwandong here in the U.S. or any of the recipes from today's show, why not send us a self-addressed stamped envelope to Travel Cafe Uncovered, 3000 West Alameda, Burbank, California. Now we've arrived in Singapore. It's one of Southeast Asia's most dynamic cities. And hidden away in this modern city, down a little side street in the heart of town, we found Dr. Lee, an amazing Chinese healer whose answer to better health is more creative cooking, much more. Doris, walk me through this. I come into the restaurant and I go to the doctor first? Uh, usually, you. no. Usually, you, if you are come to dine in the restaurant, you can always request that, can I go and see Dr. Lee to find out my, my yin and yang's balance and what is good for yin my and body. Yang balance. Dr. Lee has been a permanent fixture here at the Imperial Harbor Restaurant for 20 years. And with a little advanced planning, you can set up an appointment for a full examination before you order your main course. I can think of a lot of fast food restaurants that ought to try this, mm -hmm. having a doctor there. Fast food restaurant? Oh, yeah. Acting as my translator is Doris Ho. She's the general manager here at the restaurant. Okay, Dr. Lee says your pulse is okay. Is okay. Is everything's fine, but... Unfortunately, that he says your e, how the e your hands? My yin. Yeah. He said your gastric, your gastric yeah. is a little bit cold. It's cold, so my yin is better than my yang. No, your yin is slightly more than your yang. <laughs> my yin is more than my yang. Yes. Okay. Uh huh. Doris, how does he do that just by feeling my wrist? You know, it's not easy because for men it's this hand, the right hand. For men hand. it's this hand? For women it's this hand. Okay, heart, kidney, liver. What's on this hand? Lung. Lung. Stomach. Stomach. And kidney. Physically, yeah. Physically fit. okay? Yeah, your feet. Just try to avoid coating too much. Oh, it's amazing. This is how they sell a lot of hot meals. Actually, I turned out to be one of the lucky ones. You see, not everyone's treatment is that simple. This is the deer kidney. To strengthen the kidney, and also, it gives circulation, energy, and decided it also increase efficacy. Most of the unusual recommendations are combined with this Chinese wine. It's a way to make the remedy a little more palatable. The Chinese wine is, is on top. You can see the red one, the blue one, the green one. There's a different kind of recipe. Dr. Lee even has a recipe for the common cold. This one is wanted to put in a dessert. And it's good for people who have phlegm, cough. Now since I needed something hot to balance the cold yang, Dr. Lee recommended I try this ancient recipe for chicken. It's called the Imperial Baked Chicken with Egg Treasure Hub. We have the vegetable and some shredded pork with onion, vegetable, we have bamboo soup, and marinate with shredded pork to cook together and stuff everything in the chicken. But what makes this recipe for chicken different is the packaging. First of all, he will do the lotus leaf on the wrapping paper. Fry the chicken, overlap the chicken with some that is slight oil, and stuff the vegetable inside the chicken, and put the herbs in 
squeeze the chicken together right with the lotus leaf. So the chicken, stuffed with vegetables, is then placed in the leaf and then it's tightly wrapped in plastic wrap, twisted on both ends, followed by a layer of tin foil to really seal in the juices. But there's more. Now he is doing the dough to mash the dough into a pastry, like, like just like a pastry. But you have to wrap it up with the whole chicken to make sure the chicken to bake. After baking for four hours, the chicken, is, everything's baked inside the dough and the lotus leaf and the wrapper together. And we will, we will show you how to break it up and you can see, you can smell the, the, the nutritious of the imperial herbal baked chicken. I have never seen chicken prepared like that. Oh, this is a, something a really tradition from China, a way of style cooking. Now what's the best way to... I, I serve you to you. I'm going to be very healthy when I leave here. Sure, of course. <laughs> <laughs> you look great after it. She says I'm going to look great after it. Two hours by plane from our friends in Singapore and the Travel Cafe has caught up with another one-of-a-kind chef. It's here among the beautiful islands of Indonesia that we were introduced to Mrs. Carr, a teacher by trade who became the first female teacher in India formally trained for the job back in 1958. Before there weren't any Indian ladies working. They neither worked in shops or anywhere else. They only used to work at home as housewives. So I was a, a lucky lady because my husband allowed me to teach. But Mrs. Carr's lessons aren't limited to reading and writing. Her real passion is Indian cooking. And it's here among the rice fields of Bali. We got a lesson in the very basics, a traditional breakfast from the fields of India called pranta. When farmers, when they want to go to the fields to work, they, that's very hard work. So after taking a pranta like this, they are very satisfied. And when they drink a lot of water, this thing expands in the stomach. So that makes you not to go hungry. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> First you put the flour in a big container. Then you put a little bit of margarine. Pour some water little by little to make a dough. I have made a ball. A round one, and then I mix with some dry flour so that it doesn't become sticky. I have to prepare two like this because we are going to have a sandwich now. When both are ready, I come to the mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes, first you have to boil the potatoes. Peel them and ma mash with a fork. Then we put salt to taste. Mix in the chili powder. If you like spicy, you can put more of it. After that, we mix the spring onions. We can also use chopped onions as well. The stuff is ready for stuffing in the pranta. You see I have two chapati duff and then I will roll one of them and now when it is a bit wider I will put it aside and start with the other one. Now what I do I take the butter with the spoon take little bit and spread on top of this when this is ready then you put on top of it the other rolled one and then you press it so that it doesn't come off you put it on the griller to grill it when both sides are cooked that means the Pranta is ready. In India, usually pranta is served with plain yogurt. It's a very delicious dish. Well known in India by alu pranta and 
Plain yogurt or raita. Travel Cafe uncovers with a tasty stop in the islands of Hawaii next. We've now flown halfway across the Pacific to what Captain Cook described as the Sandwich Islands. You better know them as the Hawaiian Islands. The Big Island of Hawaii has always been a popular destination for tourists with hundreds of miles of sandy beaches and almost as many crowded restaurants. But with a little detour, the Travel Cafe uncovered a hidden treasure here in Kailua, Kona. All you need to do is head for the strip mall. We started off with something small because we are in Kailua, Kona, after all. Yeah. It's a small town. And this is where my husband's from, and, and so this is where we live. And so we wanted to open something in our backyard, so we opened 25 seats. Small. But don't let the size of this joint fool you. Oodles of Noodles is packed with locals who know a good thing when they taste it. You know, people like noodles. What can I tell you? And they have to, because that's all Amy Ferguson is selling. This is actually... Um, a, a cooking meeting that I could eat three times a day. I could have pho in the morning or sign in in the morning. I could have a seafood soup in the, uh, for dinner. I could have a salad at lunch. I could, you know, noodles are very comforting. It's a wonderful feel. And so you get the feel of it. Amy's got one of her best recipes that you can prepare at home. We're making a uh, spicy tamarind seafood soup here in Hawaii. People familiar with seafood soups. I actually call it a fish head soup. We have the fish stock, we have a fish sauce, we have tamarind, we add tomato, pineapple, we add our clams. In this case, we have cockles from New Zealand, we have mahi mahi. At home, the only problem that I think anyone might have is if they don't have a fish broth, they may want to use something like a, a clam juice. I'm going to go ahead and add my scallops. Okay, we just added our shrimp. Right now, I'm going to taste it, see how it tastes. Mm. This noodle is a, um, a mung bean noodle. We use it in different dishes here in Hawaii, like chicken green papaya, chicken long rice, and that is a favorite. You want to have as many of the um, good succulent noodles uh, that actually grab the flavor of the broth and you slurp up. We call it canoodling. And this is our spicy tamarind seafood soup. Is that a meal or what? Do you like hot and spicy? Oh, that has an incredible... That's a big kick. We've got one last recipe to uncover here on the Travel Cafe. Now here's a hint. It's a drink that made a city famous. Do you know what it is? Oh God, guess what I forgot, guys? What? I forgot the clams. Okay, I can't believe that. See, I always screw up something. And now here's your last chance to get all the uncovered recipes from today's program. Just send us a self-addressed stamped envelope to Travel Cafe, Uncovered, 3000 West Alameda, Burbank, California. It's, a, it's hard to compare with anything. I think it's unique, this one. Sweet. There's a hint of gin in it, but it's indescribable. It's Singapore's signature recipe, a combination that has been said to make people so crazy when they drink it that it had to be locked away for 75 years. After one drink, the women like go slinging around here and there, so you know maybe that's where the name came from, Singapore Sling. Since its creation in 1915, the Singapore Sling has been the pink drink with a punch selling over 800 glasses a day from the place where it all began at the Raffles Hotel. Absolutely delicious. Johnson Daniel is the head waiter here at Raffles Long Bar. It's the place where a local Chinese bartender created the first sling. When he created the Singapore sling, uh, it was by accident. Many have tried to copy that original recipe since then, but as the customers know, they just taste it different. So to make sure you get the right combination, we're going straight to the source. You start with a good dose of gin. But it's the only thing I know that is a, an ingredient of, of this Singapore sling. A little cherry brandy, pineapple juice and a touch of lime, Cointreau, Benedictine, and Grenadine. There's a lot of vodka. We've decided there's a lot of vodka in it. 
No, no, not vodka. Just a dash of Angostura, a slice of pineapple, and a cherry. This drink is very famous. So, uh, in a way, it represents uh, Singapore, a small country, and uh, we are able to make it great around the world with one drink here. It's very, very nice. Air transportation to and from Asia provided by Singapore Airlines. Hotel accommodations provided by Four Seasons.